Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So I'm filming this video on my 30th birthday. Today is the 26th of May and I thought it was a perfect time for a bit of reflection. So I've seen some of these videos on YouTube lately. I saw one on Emma Hill's channel and I saw one on Audrey Coyne's channel as well, which are some of my favorite style YouTube channel, so definitely check those out. I'll link them down below for you guys. But I thought that today I wanted to make my own version with my own style lessons that I've learned since turning 30 in my 20s. I did a video a couple of years back with sort of my journey from a shopaholic to a minimalist, but today I'm gonna pinpoint the lessons that I've learned throughout my 20s and hopefully they can inspire you. Maybe you will prevent yourself from making the same mistakes. But I will also say that it's always important to make your own mistakes because it's really through those we learn something. So definitely make your own experiences as well. But in any case, I hope this can inspire you in some way or the other. So let's have a look at the 10 most valuable style lessons that I have learned throughout my 20s. Number one is that new doesn't necessarily mean that it's better. I've talked about this rush of the new, this feeling of buying something new, opening a box, wearing those fresh from the box sneakers, but they will eventually get dirty. And to me, something that I've learned, which has have been very valuable is that, you know, when I buy something, when I invest in something, I have to be able to still love this item as much when it gets dirty or when it's dirty in the laundry bin. So just because something is dirty or needs to be fixed up or something like that, it doesn't mean that you have to part with that item. This feeling that we get when we wear something completely new or fresh, it will pass. And we sort of have to learn to live with that because in order to be truly sustainable fashion consumers, we need to keep items in our wardrobe for more than one season. We need to keep it in our wardrobe for years before it's a truly sustainable investment. So for me, it's definitely been a very valuable lesson learning that new doesn't equal better. Also, something I've learned in this whole area is that I don't need a new dress every time I have to go to a special occasion. So I've created a well-curated occasion wear mini capsule wardrobe within my closet um, with some outfits that I can gravitate towards whenever I have a special occasion coming up so I don't run out and buy a new dress just because I panic and I don't know what to wear. Number two is that less really is more. And I know that this is such a cliche, especially coming from me, but I have really learned that spending a little bit more on the pieces that I buy for my wardrobe really makes a world of a difference. I'm not saying you have to buy crazy expensive designer items every time you buy something, but learn something about materials learn something about yourself, what kind of fits you like, what kind of materials you like, and think a bit more about the longevity of the items that you buy and then add to your wardrobe so that they can last for a really long time and so that you feel amazing every time you wear them and not just the first time because you bought them too cheap, wash them one time and then they're no good. So to me, less really is more in more than one sense. When I was younger, especially in my early 20s, when I didn't have that many money because I was studying and all that. To me, I was always going straight to the sale racks um, because I wanted my money to go as far as possible. I wanted to buy a lot of things for very little money, which, you know, in some cases there's nothing wrong with that. We all have different sorts of budgets, so no harm in that. Um, but I didn't really think about the quality of the pieces that I bought. I didn't really give much thought into the style I bought. It was just, you know, and in the end, I ended up spending way more money on things because they wouldn't last me that long. They wouldn't really fit me. They, you know, they weren't really, it wasn't really the style that I was truly going for. So yeah, again, I really learned that for me, at least um, less really is more. Number three is especially after turning blogging into my full-time job that I don't have to hunt down what is trendy on Instagram. You know, we all see those specific kinds of it bags or sneakers all over social media all of a sudden. And that's sometimes where trends actually happen or sort of like arise. It's through social media. Um, and if there's something that I've learned with myself through the years, you know, 
and just in speaking trends in general that you have to be careful with these passing trends. Of course, they can be fun to incorporate into your wardrobe sometimes. Yeah, it just keeps everything fresh, um, but you don't have to hunt down everything that is trendy on Instagram just to feel like you're accepted. At least that's something I told myself, especially through these past couple of years, again, since turning blogging into my full-time job. I don't need that latest Fendi bag or those Balenciaga sneakers that everyone else is wearing if I don't like them myself. So when I invest in something, I buy it with intention and with the intention of having this in my wardrobe for a really long time and not just because it's trendy right now. So that is a really valuable lesson that I've taught myself over the years. So going into the fourth lesson that I've learned these past 10 years is very much aligned with what we just talked about. So all of those sort of like Instagram trends and feeling accepted by the social media world. And that is that how I feel is more important than anything. You guys won't believe how many times I've heard that sentence, your style is boring, why don't you wear more dresses, why don't you wear more colors? You always wear the same. Why do you always sh share that same Chanel bag on your Instagram feed? And the truth is, I don't care. This is my style and I have found out what I truly like. If you go into my Instagram profile, the very first point you see in my Instagram bio text is that I am an outfit repeater. And if you don't like that, then you should go elsewhere. So in this, I've also learned that it's very important that you stay careful about who you choose to shop with and while advice from friends and family can come from a super good place and you know you can put something on that you know they suggest and they give you a lot of compliments and you may look really good in that dress but if you don't feel it if you don't feel like yourself and if you don't feel it right in that dress it's not going to be a success so how you feel is way more important than what others think Number five is probably one of the most important things that I've learned, especially since diving into the whole world of ethical and sustainable fashion. And that is that there's no such thing as a perfect conscious consumer. Every time I get a comment from someone pointing out that I'm supporting a certain brand that might not be perfect or whatever it might be, um, you know, I do realize that I of course need to be careful because this is my job, but there is no such thing as being a perfect conscious consumer, not even for me. So every time I get a comment like that, I silently think to myself, well, I dare you to, to point out the perfect conscious consumer because I bet you, you can't find that. Um, not even yourself. So I guess I really wanted to mention this to, you know, inspire you guys to be a bit more kind to yourself in this whole process because it is really heavy and it's something that we all need to learn. So of course it's all about challenging yourself and I think this is something we should all think way more about as consumers, but be kind to yourself in the process. So lesson number six that I've learned in my 20s is more in the makeup area. So it's to use makeup as a tool and not as a cover-up. When I look back at the photos when I was in my early 20s, I almost cannot recognize myself. And I think the main reason for that is that I wore so much more makeup. Um, and obviously I was playing around with it. I was trying to find myself like many people are from their teens and up through their 20s. And I think it's really important again to make some mistakes and make some experiences and play around with things to find out who you really are. Um, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with wearing a lot of makeup, you know, each to their own, but I've definitely learned that I feel a lot better when I'm not wearing a cake of makeup that I have to worry about maintaining throughout the day, feel a lot more relaxed. And also personally, I just think I look better when I'm not wearing too much makeup. I actually like when you can see my skin through the foundation I'm wearing. Um, so little imperfections is something that I've really learned to embrace. Lesson number seven is something that I've learned recently and something I've always done, but just not with as much intention as I do now. And it is how powerful it can be when you dress with more contrast. So again, I've always enjoyed mixing classic elements with something really casual and then something edgy. That's sort of like the, the style directions I like to follow within my own wardrobe. But I've tried to really think a lot more about it lately. So when I 
put on an outfit in the morning, I try to add some contrast to fit the mood that I'm in that specific day or just to, you know, think more about what I really wish to communicate to the world around me, which is something that is really powerful through dressing. That's something that we, we all more or less do through what we wear. Lesson number eight is that fashion is not superficial. Fashion and style and showing our surroundings who we are is actually something that is deeply rooted within us as human beings. It's something that we've actually been doing since we were cave people. There is absolutely no shame in being interested in style or fashion. You're not less intelligent just because you are interested in how you look and your appearance. And I actually think that in order to have a way more sustainable fashion future, we should all acknowledge superficial is something that is deeply rooted within us and it's something that you know it's deeply connected to our identity as human beings so for me that is one of the main reasons why i love what i do here on my channel and on my social platforms and also one of the reasons why i wanted to become a certified style coach because i want to get out there and help more people make peace with themselves through their wardrobe because that is actually something you can do i know it sounds crazy and out there but again you know fashion is just so much more than something superficial it's something that lies within us as well lesson number nine that i've learned is probably something that could go in any of these other lessons that i've learned but it is that repeating outfits is okay. Again, I mentioned before that I've often heard people say that I always wear the same or that my style is boring, but to me, it's been a very valuable lesson to let go of all that and think more about what I feel and make peace with myself and how I want to look, you know. Repeating outfits and really build a versatile and, and you know, long-lasting capsule wardrobe has been a great lesson in itself because it's it's taught me to let go of that feeling of having to keep up with all sorts of different trends and having to have all of the newest things in my wardrobe you know i feel like by making peace with my wardrobe i've truly made peace with myself as well and that's been a very very valuable lesson to me the final lesson i've learned is comfort above all of course I want to look my best and sometimes I do stretch a little bit beyond comfort. So for example, I have a pair of vintage Levi's jeans in my wardrobe. They're made in 100% cotton, they're not stretchy at all. And they do sometimes squeeze my tummy a bit, just enough so that I have to open the top button in the jeans. But it's okay with me, you know, I'm willing to compromise just a little bit for those jeans because I feel so amazing every time I wear them. Um, so I do have some items in my wardrobe that give me this feeling. I have really tried to narrow that down and I've tried to over the years combine, you know, all of the practical elements and comfort with style. And it is definitely doable and I would say whether you are a hardworking mom or um, if you ride your bike to work or, you know, if you need to have some elements and levels of practicality within your looks, you can definitely incorporate that while still looking stylish. And I'm hoping I can make much more content about this in the near future and show you some examples of how you can do this. Um, but it's definitely been a very valuable lesson for me as well. So I'm sure I've probably forgotten some lessons throughout this video, but these are definitely the 10 most valuable lessons I have learned the past 10 years. Really hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it inspiring and fun to just have a look into what I have learned through my 20s. I would love to know what you guys have learned um, yourself the past couple of years. Leave anything down below. I'd love to read through all of your comments and lessons learned. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys for another video on Sunday. Bye guys.